All right. Hello there, everyone. Hello. Good to see you. The Golden Warrioress is thrilled that you are here today to uh, kind of walk through. Um, again, this is going to be a very opinionated video, so if you don't like opinions, or you find opinions offensive, or you just don't enjoy Covain, or you don't enjoy me, uh, feel free to, you know, leave, give a dislike, give me a nasty comment. Uh, it doesn't really bother, bother me, or doesn't really change what's going to be going on here in the video. Um, so I had a question about uh, give a good uh, mage build, light or dark, doesn't matter. So cheese, this is uh, this is for you, and uh, we'll try and answer maybe some of your questions, some of my method, uh, and some of the uh, understanding of how to really match your character to the places where you're going to be going. So we're going to be running uh, three different blood codes here, and again, uh, this is all just my my opinion and what I've found as I've gone through Code Vein. Um, again, uh, you'll, we'll be running uh, Orion, we will be running Queen's Throat, and then we will be running Eos. Uh, so those three blood codes are going to be what we're going to cover, and we're going to cover a variety of different uh, scenarios and uh, why and how you would pick or would want to pick uh, certain things along those lines. So if we uh, run up here in the uh, first level of the game, we'll notice there's a guy here, and... Thanks, Eva. We can simply just do um, a massive AoE damaging attack, and wow, that kills that guy, right? Did 5,700 damage to him before he went down. So all of a sudden, you know, you might be fooled into thinking that Sansa Depravity is, you know, one of the best AoE um, damaging attacks in the game. However, uh, all the sand attacks, uh, so Sansa Depravity, Armaset, um, and Volatile Storm, uh, these these say that they are slash and they have a non-physical of nothing so they are like actual regular weapon slashing attacks or crush attacks so they don't have any uh, blood uh, lightning fire or ice attached to them so these are good uh, same same with sand edge this is a, a knockdown um, a knockdown gift but uh, you these these gifts don't have any elemental resistance uh, in the game, so they are purely just damage straight. Um, so here, that is um, that elemental resistance is something that if you're going to be building for gifting, uh, ranged gifting, close gifting, any kind of gifting, uh, the number one topic uh, to consider what enemy you're going up against is uh, elemental weakness and damage typing. Those two things. If you can match those to any any enemy you come up against in the game, uh, you will be an unstoppable, unstoppable gifter. However, the fact of the matter is is that you have to uh, delve into Code Vein as as deep as the rabbit hole goes to really understand. You know, you come up to this guy, and how do you know what his weaknesses are? Well, a great way to test weaknesses on enemies is either with the uh, four slashing. Um, abilities here so dusk edge crimson moon aurora flash and jupiter's blade if you test these four since they all have um, the same uh, requirements of a willpower of b ig ignore the mind of b uh, that's but it's still a dark gift so it still runs the same um it still runs the same as uh the others it just has a different requirement to be able to use uh so if you run these four gifts or you run the four uh lightning spikes or you run the four uh, freezing roars, um, or the four the four roar gifts, the four roars, the four spikes, and the four slashes. Uh, you can know exactly what type of enemy you're coming up against. So if we come up to this guy and we go for Dusk Edge, uh, we go for oops, Crimson Moon, uh, we go for Jupiter's Blade, uh, and we can't get you know um, Aurora Flash here, but that's okay. And we'll just run up. And we'll do a Dusk Edge, 85-10. Okay. I shouldn't be teleporting back. So 85-10. Let's, uh, let's write that down here. Or, or put it in our calculator. So 85-10. 
Okay, and uh, the next one we'll run is Crimson Moon, which will be fire. Mm -hmm. So 7201. Uh, so 7201. And then uh, the last one, Jupiter's Blade. So you can see already that he definitely has a, uh, a higher weakness to blood rather than to fire. Uh, and Slash seems to do pretty good damage against him. So, and Jupiter's Blade does uh, 7201 as well. Uh, yeah, so 7201. So, uh, definitely a weakness to blood. Uh, so, since those three gifts are exactly um, identical in the amount of damage they do, uh, that is how you can test uh, slashing. And then you can switch to Sanguine Roar, uh, um, sure, Freezing Roar and plasma roar and we can check uh, the roar gifts against him and since these are crush you can check slashing and crush so 10,638 that was really good damage since he's weak to blood we know that now okay uh, then sanguine roar is definitely going to wreck him now freezing roar won't do as much 81 83 so about 20 percent less damage so he definitely has a has a uh, uh, ice resistance of about 20%. Uh, that, that's, that's again all off the top of my head here as we just kind of run through these. Uh, so then we look at Crush Lightning, 9,000. So he definitely, uh, before he had the same, so here's where you need to start uh, using your, your old gift that God gave you in your brain, is the fact that uh, when we were doing the slash gifts, he did the same amount of damage in Jupiter's Blade and Crimson Moon equally so he has a slash normal i guess you could call it uh no no resistance to slash but he definitely has a weakness to crush as we saw a um difference there be excuse me between the sanguine roar between freezing roar and between plasma roar so he took more damage to plasma roar than freezing roar so you know he has an ice resistance and a and a um lightning weakness so that's also very interesting to see and then we can look at um, Blazing Roar. Uh, let's go ahead and get him back and see about Fire, what this does to him. So if it's in the 8,000 range, then we know he's uh, the same uh, resistance as Ice. So 9,000. So this guy, you would want to do Blood first, and you would want to do uh, probably Blood Crush, since uh, it looks like he has a higher weakness to Crush. Um, and... Uh, then we would try the spike gifts uh, if we go for um, something uh, mind-based. Uh, let's see. Well, sure, we'll just do queen. And we'll switch to, um, sure, this one. And we'll go for the spikes. Uh, and we'll put ice down here. And we'll put lightning at the top. And uh, flame spike. So this covers all three damage types and all four elements uh, with these 12 different gifts. So here's Blood Spike, 4661. So we know he has a weakness to blood. Um, and he, he took a whole ton of damage to, um, to crush, but Slash seemed to be right on his heels at a second, 3585. So again, we know that's a 20% resistance there, but uh, Pierce seems to be in his uh, strength, so we wouldn't approach this guy. Uh, we wouldn't approach this guy with any kind of uh, piercing and piercing damage. Thirty-nine forty-four. See, that's a that's more than uh, uh, the the ice spike. And then we'll uh, check out uh, the flame spike. Here we go. And so thirty-nine forty-four. So definitely his first weakness is blood, first and foremost. Uh, and I would, I would definitely go for Crush against this guy. And then second, I would do um, Slash. And I would go for um, uh, Blood again. But then I would do Lightning and Fire. And then last but not least, I would definitely do Ice um, against him. And I would definitely not go for any kind of piercing uh, damage on him if I can, if I can at all help it. Uh, so that's kind of um, the process and how and the uh, mental gymnastics you kind of need to run through uh, to really understand um, when and where is the appropriate time to use 
uh, what gifts and when and, and why. Um, so this also goes for the bosses as well. Every single boss has a, a damage typing, uh, a weakness, and a um, elemental resist or elemental weakness as well. So uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is that whatever we pick here in the first place won't be good here in the dried up trenches, which probably won't be good in the cathedral, which won't be good in the frozen souls. The rigid frozen souls and the ash and under underground changes again and again every single um, level that you come across, even the depths that you come across, uh, you need to know each we each enemy typing, each enemy uh, elemental resist and weakness, and also uh, what their attacks are to determine whether blocking or dodging or what have you is is uh, the rule of thumb. So uh, with what we have here, let's just go to um, the dried up trenches, simply because we have um, execution uh, as an active gift, and since that's a blood slash gift, uh, as you saw, these uh, first lost guys are weak to blood, so in the um, dried up trenches here, uh, we can do some great uh, blood slashing, but you'll notice that... Uh, um, a lot of our gifts are X'd out. Now, uh, don't ever be afraid of a gift that is X'd out. Um, you can definitely make use of it with uh, co Cognitive Zeal, Somatic Zeal, and uh, the third one is um, Vigorous Zeal. Uh, so these, these increase your um, temporary increases, increases fortitude and vitality, mind and willpower, and strength and dex. So you can uh, alter your um, blood code stats uh, from these gifts. So don't ever be afraid of um, gifts that are X'd out to make use of them uh, simply by popping uh, Cognitive Zeal, Somatic Zeal, or Vigorous Zeal along the way. Um, that shouldn't deter you in any way, shape, or form from, oh, it's got a red X, you know, when I pick it here in the menu, uh, you know, then I can't use it altogether, so I'm just going to ignore it. No, look, look, at the, uh, look at the requirements uh, card here of required stats of, of Willpower B, and then change to your stats. Um, here in the blood code and go ahead and see if I go up one half step of a level of a letter level then uh, will I still be able to make use of it or not um, so that's kind of the thought process of how I go through things now uh, this is a, a purely dark um, gifting build here um, so if we just go ahead and do sands of depravity on this guy uh, so that killed him now we definitely want to go for all the uh, drain abilities here and the gift accelerators as well. So if we run up to this guy, now we don't have um, incredible uh, damage out of our weapon, however that that is completely irrelevant. Uh, we are in it for the uh, amount of damage that we can get out quickly and effectively. So we can, uh, we killed that guy in one shot, that's good. Okay, so let's go for a Sands of Depravity up there on that guy, that'll kill him. Okay. And we'll kill this guy. 11,000 damage. That's really, really good. And we can't get that guy. So that's fine. We'll just uh, continue on this way. And we'll go for a backstab on this guy. Now, again, uh, what we pick here in this area uh, will not be good um, anywhere else. Simply because of the fact that uh, uh, what, we, what we will be going for here will only be good versus enemies who are weak to blood and uh, slash and these kinds of things see and we killed these two guys back to back and we'll go for uh, icor or uh, for focus uh, recovery here since uh, every time we get focused we get uh, really good um, icor drain and okay so we're, I mean you can see that as a um, as a uh, dark gift um, we are just wrecking these guys and we'll dodge away from this guy. Now we got uh, focused, and we also uh, got um, uh, 10 i back, since that's how uh, focus for us uh, works with um, i focus. We get 10 back on a, I on a focus, um, uh, entering the focus state, and um, because we uh, can enter the focus state pretty much whenever we want. I mean, 12,000 damage on that guy, that's just crazy. Um, since we can enter focus state pretty much whenever we want, uh, however we want, uh, we can always be getting uh, i -Core back. Oops, we took a hit. So let's go ahead and get a backstab and get i -Core back. And uh, as we're doing this, we're continually getting 
more i -Corps and we're getting um, a higher i -Corps count. Okay, well, and let's go ahead and use our i -Corps. Okay. There we kill that guy. And we'll go for a four frost stream here. Good. We got focused. Oh, and we died. Okay, let's go for a Sands of Depravity here. We'll kill everyone. Now, Sands of Depravity has a uh, very large um, uh, startup time, so it's kind of dangerous, as you saw there, running into a big group. I got a little ahead of myself, uh, but Eva was definitely there to uh, watch our back, which is why uh, she's also great to bring, because um, we have Gift Accelerator, Gift Prowess, Increased Gift Speed, and we also have um, Eva's uh, Increase in Gift Speed as we uh, go through any kind of area. Now we can take this same build and go to um, a different level and completely do, uh, you know, just completely trash damage versus other enemies. So it's all about where you are and what you're going for instead of, uh, you know, what one build uh, is gonna, you know, one build to rule them all. That, that doesn't exist really in Code Bean. Uh, to my experience, um, there there are you know really 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 good uh, blood codes and really really good ways to go about uh, gifting and go about uh, you know getting damage off onto the enemy. I mean, there just is a good example. These guys are usually pretty tough, but uh, we just kind of made him look like a fool. So we'll cut him down, and we'll get a backstab, and this won't kill obviously, but it'll give us enough eye cord that we can just do this again. So, yeah, I mean, we, we have extreme damage, but uh, simply because we're typed for the enemy. Now, if we wanted to uh, be really ridiculous in typing for the enemy in this area, we would definitely be going for Dusk Edge. And since that's a, uh, sorry, no, we would be going for a Sanguine Roar. And uh, since we have Execution, that's a Slash. And we would need a Pierce, so we would definitely be going for Draconic Stake. Um, so this is how you would build um, to actually be effective in this area, uh, to be extremely typed for the enemy, uh, no matter what, no matter no matter how. Uh, so let's uh, watch out for this guy. Okay, and we'll give him a sanguine roar and an execution. And yeah, so uh, if you if you really want to um, type exactly specifically. Um, for the enemy, uh, this is definitely uh, how you want to do it. Thanks, Dingo. Um, so yeah, you can see here that uh, if we go for uh, Somatic Zeal and we go for a Draconic Stake, we're just going to wreck this guy. Yep. And uh, yep, that's that. <laughs> oh, got a moth in here. Yuck. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's drop in over here on this guy. Get some I core back from him. Whoa, Eva killed him. Okay, so uh, then we can go for um, just a backstab on this guy. Now remember, uh, crush is probably this guy's um, biggest weakness. So we're gonna go for more backstabs. Uh, good job, Eva. Okay, and we'll go for a Draconic Stake on this guy. There we go. Very cool. We'll go for a Sanguine Roar on this guy. Kill him. And we'll go for a Slash on this guy. Almost kill him. We'll get some Icor back. Okay. Alright, and then up here, we'll go for a Draconic Stake on this guy. And kill him right quick. 15,000 almost? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely uh, weak to blood. <laughs> so, uh, you can see that... Uh, you know, if we if we go for this kind of a setup, um, we have really, 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 really good damage um, to all the enemies that we come up against and come across, uh, for good reason, since we are explicitly typed for this ex exact area without um, without thinking about it. Even we can just do extreme damage. So we'll back up, do an execution. Good. And just move on. So now, if we would switch to um, something a little different. Uh, so if we switch to Queen's Throat and we want to go for the Ivory Grace, uh, the, yeah, the Fortified, 
um, and we're still using the Brionic. And since we're going lightning, ice, and all these different uh, gifts here, you'll notice that uh, we will we will be not as effective by any means. Um, so uh, everything I'm saying here again, remember that this is all just my opinion. You can run lightning against these guys. I mean, there's nothing in the game that tells you no, we can't do this or we can't do that. Um, the problem is, is that if you uh, get stuck on a build, um, you know that that's probably going to hurt you. Um, more than anything else because you're going to be typed wrong in, in most every scenario and you're not going to be able to um, effect most effectively um, kill your enemy okay so that doesn't go down there and see that did not do um, the damage that it did before uh, it definitely had uh, a pretty weak um, start up there. Now see it didn't kill this guy over here. Whoops. Okay. Whoops. Uh, so we, we still have good damage. We still have really good damage, but it comes it comes at a cost of um, it comes at the cost of uh, using more I core than you would normally use uh, in order to kill these guys. So there we can uh, we can see that uh, we definitely have good AOE, we have good ability, um, th and this is all uh, light dark hybrid um, from uh, from the Queen's Throat simply because we have Thunderbolt Impact Horfrost Stream. This is a light dark dark light, um, and we have a and the Snowy Elegance or Ivory Grace is a light dark um, combined blood uh, veil, and so we can pair that with the Brionic and we can get uh, really, really good um, damage potentials out of our um, veils and everything. Okay, so see, we can't uh, get this guy. Now, because these guys are simply just easy, um, we can go ahead and kill them right quick and, and really simply and really easily. But, uh, and you might be thinking like, well, this looks, looks just as good as the, as the blood typing. Yeah, it did, but I can't encourage him to come down here so we're just gonna run over here but see the fact of the matter is is that uh, um, you know yeah we're doing really good damage and everything but we're not typed correctly for these um, so you kind of get a lulled into a false sense of security thinking that well every every enemy and every typing see that was 8400 8, and last time we did uh, 15,000 with uh, one of our gifts so that's that's kind of where you have to, you know, be paying attention a little more, uh, rather than just, uh, you know, I like this gift, or I like this build, or I, I've done this build for, you know, a long time, and, and it's really good, and uh, that that's true, and that's very fine, and there's nothing wrong with that, uh, it's just you, you may have, have a much harder time than you um, probably should be having, simply because of the fact that uh, you're, you're not typed correctly. There we go. Let's go ahead and uh, kill this thing. There we go. And then this... Where is he? Where's the big guy? Oh, there he is. Okay, let's go for a frost wave. So 9300. Uh, that is definitely not what you want to be doing. I mean, that's really good damage, don't get me wrong. I mean, that's, that's nothing to scoff at. But the fact of the matter is, is you're not doing um, the most damage you could possibly be doing. See, that was only 7,000. That uh, is definitely not uh, the amount of damage that you can wish for. I mean, you can do much more damage than that. Okay, let's go for this. And then it will go for a frost wave on him. So, I mean, we're still effective. Uh, and that's fine. Because, uh, you know, we're just fighting uh, beginning game kind of enemies here. But uh, that's why this can be dangerous to think that, well, all gifts are created equal and all damage types and so on and so forth. But uh, you can see that the damage numbers were in the tens of thousands and beyond when we were paired into the blood range um, with all our blood gifts. But uh, um, if, we would, if we go to the uh, cathedral and we run blood, um, we're just going to get destroyed. Um, so, so that's why uh, you can't you can't run through the dried up trenches thinking, oh, look at look at how good the blood gifts are. And we're just going to wreck everything in sight. 
and then you come back and you come to some place like the cathedral and we'll run the same uh, Orion blood code and you'll see that it's just it just doesn't uh, hold up as well as uh, something like what we're doing here with the light dark combo now these are, these still are very very good um, builds in my opinion I mean they they do you know into the tens of thousands of uh, of damage on uh, the the correct enemy and everything but uh, as we run through here you'll notice a little bit uh, a little bit uh, different of a of an approach that we uh, or a, a, of an outcome that we were expecting from the dried up trenches so we'll go for you know maximum ability here yeah the local guard see 2000 <laughs> uh, I mean we were doing way more there's there's that one okay and and look how long it's taking us to kill her okay there was 3800 I mean that was that was pitiful we didn't even get over 4,000 damage on uh, one gift that we came out with so this was this was just wrecking face in uh, in the dried up trenches however here in the cathedral which is which can potentially be right after the dried up trenches you 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 know you're running thinking man I got Orion I got a DLC blood code I'm rocking it I got a DLC blood veil I got a DLC weapon uh, you know I got all this craziness I got this focus stuff when I'm focused I get 50% more damage so I'm gonna just be a, a, a damage powerhouse anytime I come up an, against an enemy and then you get here and you just get completely destroyed uh, because the damage typing is not correct so then if we uh, s switch to uh, the Queen's Throat and we switch back to um, the uh, Ivory Grace here, the Snowy Elegance um, and again you'll you'll see a, uh, a difference here in how we uh, approach this enemy <laughs> and the uh, results that we are met with um, so this is this is the again the most important thing in, in my mind and uh, in my experience is understanding damage typing and enemy typing if you can understand those two things for every enemy in the game you're an unstoppable mage so there's 7300 and 4700 so two gifts and that guy's gone so you can definitely see that oh ice is looking pretty good uh, as compared to blood in this area uh, so that's that's where you can kind of understand um, the the uh, just just the fact that when people say like oh I've been trying this you know mage build and uh, you know it's not working against like uh, I don't know Mido or the Blade Bear and Cannoneer or I'm having I I had a real good time adventuring and then I tried to do excuse me I and I tried to do the same build against you know whatever boss and something then uh, you know it didn't work and it's like well yeah because the uh, the damage typing uh, you know wasn't correct or um, you know it didn't it didn't work out simply because of the fact that you were trying to do uh, the wrong elemental type paired with the wrong damage type against an enemy that resists both of those so you're at it like a 80 percent damage reduction on your gifts and you're spending precious icor which could be the difference between you know life and death <laughs> kind of in that scenario that if you can get this gift off you'll kill six enemies around you or if you can't get it off you know you're going down really really quickly and in the later game uh you know seven stars and beyond um you you don't have time to say like well i'll just recover i'll take the hit and then i'll move on from there i mean you just you just can't do that uh so here in the um in the uh, bottomless shore or the pit uh you can see that uh you know we do really good damage versus these guys as ice and as as lightning we do massive damage uh, so that's how you can kind of start to see that if you don't kill an if you're if you're typed correctly uh, you should be starting to kill enemies in one shot um, regardless of uh, where you are and what you're doing um, and you got to pay really close attention as you go through the different areas if you're gifting uh, if you're not using physical attacks we're using the Brianax simply as a tool it's not our weapon um, it's not a weapon by any means um, uh, to, to actually do anything it's just simply a tool to get us more icor so so this guy if we do lightning 
he doesn't take too much damage from lightning, but there is 13,000 from Aurora Flash. So we'll use a Horfrost Stream and kill this, the, spidey, the sluggies here. We'll go for Frost Wave on them. Okay, and see, now all of a sudden Ice is looking like the thing you want to be going for. Um, so if you run through here and you have Ice and Lightning, which again, the boss of the area gives you an idea, or sorry, the enemies in an area give you an, an idea of what the boss uh, weaknesses are. So you'll notice that uh, through this area we've been doing Lightning Ice, uh, and what is the Executioner weak against? Lightning Ice. So if you're paying close attention, you know exactly what to go for against the boss, uh, simply because of the area you're in. So let's get some i back. And we'll go for a Horcross stream, and of course that'll kill. Oh, and it's killing somebody else over there. Let's uh, go ahead and get some i -Core. Let's go for a Frost Wave. What was that? 8,000 something? So uh, you can you can see that, uh, you know, this would be a pretty good uh, build to do Queen's Throat running through the uh, bottomless pit here um, to run up to the um, Executioner as you can pretty much one-shot any enemy that you're coming up against. And uh, let me get my notebook here. Oh, and uh, we have a special treat tonight. We ha actually have orange juice that we're drinking instead of water. So if you notice me taking little breaks here and there, I'm definitely uh, hitting that orange juice uh, cup. Uh, so the Executioner, she's weak to crush, ice, lightning, and blood. Um, so you can notice that uh, that lightning crush gift against those balls, uh, the spike balls, did just exceptional damage. Yeah, definitely take that orange juice while we can get it. Um, so this is kind of a hybrid uh, light-dark. Uh, you can mix these up. Um, and simply because of the fact that Queen's Throat has both uh, light and or, or mind and willpower so high, uh, and that paired up with the uh, with the Brionic uh, as a just an Icor drain uh, sucker out of the um, out of the end of the blade here. Very cool design. Um, you can uh, make great use of this. And as soon as you get um, focused, uh, we have the unique of uh, Queen's Throat, which is Icor reduction. So this reduces Icor consumption while you're focused. So what that does is it does a minus two on uh, Icor requirements. So Horfrost Stream would be eight Icor. Frost Wave would be three, which is crazy. Uh, Aurora Flash would be three, and Lightning or Thunder Thunderbolt Impact would be four. So all of a sudden your three top gifts here would be uh, extremely efficient. Um, and you see that we don't have a um, a friend gift. Uh, modest offering, restorative offering, or uh, sympathetic boon, sim simply because of the fact of that we're killing enemies so quickly if we're typed correctly that uh, you know it doesn't really matter. Um, our our ally is never really going to be in trouble simply because of the fact that uh, you know we just have massive amount of um, icor that we can spend at our disposal, and we have great great drain rating uh, out of the Brionic as uh, paired up with. Um, Blood Sinking Blades and Hunting Feast and the Drain Activator. Now we have great damage coming out since we have uh, Mind and Willpower up paired with Cognitive Zeal. That'll take us to an S plus in Mind and an S in Willpower. So all the time we will be doing just crazy bonkers damage. Um, again, if we're typed correctly uh, with Crush, Pierce, or Slash um, and uh, the um, elements are matched correctly. Uh, so let's move on to a pure light build. Uh, where everything you do is going to be light based um, and let's head on over to uh, um, uh, sure we'll, we'll head to the city of the falling plane um, so this is this is where uh, you know it, typing and everything is just really really crucial and important simply because uh, you get to some of the places are really really obvious like obviously in the ridge of frozen souls you want to be running fire most of the time uh, but then you do come across some of the lost who are weak to lightning, so you want to run fire lightning through there. Um, then, for example, here in the uh, City of Falling Flame, you want to be running ice. What kind of ice? It doesn't really matter uh, at this point because just the weakness of ice is so much more than uh, the actual damage type. It's, it's not a big deal. So we're paired up with the uh, ice blood. 
okay, simply because nice. it matches our uh, outfit superbly. Uh, but at the same time, it's a very, very light weapon at only um, 17 pounds. Uh, so if we go this, then we can go over here. So then we can talk about it a little bit. So it has ice built in. Uh, it's a uh, dex, um, it's a dex scaler. And since uh, EOS is um, not really good in dex, it doesn't really matter. What matters is we definitely need to be uh, light in order to uh, be able to, to maintain uh, swift destruction. Uh, and since we are light, uh, if we go to any other uh, one-handed sword, uh, we can be quick or different things. Uh, however, you know, aesthetics are important to me, um, so we have to go for that. Uh, we could go for uh, the broadsword devour. Anytime you can get the broadsword devour, it's the highest one-handed uh, drain weapon in the game. Uh, so, you know, there's not a, there's not another uh, one-handed sword that uh, comes close to 0.56 with an icor uh, with a devour chrome on it. Uh, so you can see here, but the uh, machete, if you get that um, with a devour chrome, it also can get to the 0.56, but it's so much heavier, 52.9 pounds versus 43, so it will pr pretty much invalidate um, most of the blood codes you'll come up against. Uh, so for uh, EOS, uh, we are going to be uh, running the, um, uh, what do you call it, the Noble Silver and the uh, Fortified is uh, 1527 light and uh, the intensified is 1539 so obviously we go for the intensified since it's so much more uh, light damage uh, now we could technically go for the daybreak thunderfang to get the highest light damage in the game but you'll notice that it puts us into the normal bracket uh, so we would have to use something different like a uh, hasten or a mobility enhancer or so on and so forth and that kind of gets into your way of uh, being effective now again, we have X'd out gifts. That's no problem. We pop somatic zeal, and we're right back up on top there. So let's get our gifts going. Oops. And we'll get these gifts going. And now uh, our ice blood devour is no longer doing 0.45, but 1.32 times 1.8 is uh, 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 like four. What is that? Uh, 1.32 times 1.8. So we're getting 2.4 back on a, uh, a 2.4 icor back on a on one slash. So we're going to almost kill that guy. Whoops. Yeah, we definitely don't want to be doing fire here. Uh, so we have pierce, crush, and uh, oh, we would need a slash. Uh, so we could go for ice slash. This is the only ice slash in the game. I'm very disappointed. Uh, my day is ruined <laughs> uh, simply because we only have one ice slash gift and it's this one and it's a uh, dark uh, required but uh, you see our dark is uh, completely trash so we're not going to be um, doing any of that so we could go for crush uh, two crush ice one pierce ice and thunderbolt impact just because it's awesome okay so if we go back through here uh, we can uh, do some do some uh, attacks here Let's go for Frost Roar. Okay. Okay, let's go for Frost Wave. Oh boy. So, yeah, this is uh, where things get a little bit dicey. Now, Cloak of Winter has an extremely slow um, startup time. Oh, we died. Uh, it has an extremely slow startup time, and this guy, as you can see, just has mountains of HP. Um, and we can go for. Uh, since we're going light, uh, I'm an actual idiot here, so don't follow my example on this. Uh, P.S. I'm not the smartest person in the world. Uh, you probably already knew that. We don't need to be doing this. We need to be going for light gifts because uh, I'm an idiot. And so uh, we will uh, try this again. <laughs> Correctly typed. Again, uh, you know, that's a blunder on my part. And so that's why, that's where, you know, just kind of playing around and giving giving the respect uh, required to the uh, different enemies in the different areas. Okay, she's going to push him off the edge. I don't care. Uh, we're going to run back here. And we'll get our... Okay. And we killed those. That's good. Okay, we'll go for a frost wave on this guy. We'll wait for this guy to come over here. Okay, we'll go for this, and a, oop, we need to get some slashes on him. 
There we go. We're getting some Icor back. Let's go for Cloak of Winter. Oh boy. There we go. Okay. There we go. We'll get a backstab and this should finish him off. There we go. Okay, so yeah, this guy just uh, you know, he takes massive amounts of damage. Okay, so let's go let's continue on here a little bit through the city of the falling flame. And uh, as you can see, I mean we are whoops. We are typed correctly. I don't know why that guy died when I ran into the wall here. That was a little weird. But uh, that happened. So if you're typed correctly um, for the enemy, I mean, you can see here we're doing pretty good damage um, no matter what. And we'll just take the damage across the flames here. We'll kill this guy, 10,000. So see, you know these guys are weak to lightning. And not, not ice. Let's go for a Cloak of Winter. There we go. And we'll go for a Backstab. We'll get some Icor back. It looks like the uh, patch 1.53 fixed the uh, fixed the flame uh, bug as well around our feet. Uh, so that's really nice. And see, we don't have uh, the Icor recovery we had with the uh, Brianna. Now our um, now our light gifts are doing 50% more damage because we are focused, but uh, we don't have anybody to attack and we don't have any i to get <laughs> uh, from anybody. So we're uh, kind of up a creek without a paddle, as they say. Okay, let's go ahead and dodge this guy. Oops. Okay. And we'll just uh, use the ball here to get i back so we can do this and Hunting Feast. And we will go ahead and run through here. We'll come up against this guy. Okay. And we're taking heavy damage here in the flames. Oh. And we're definitely taking heavy damage uh, from him. So let's go for a Thunderbolt Impact. And see again, he's weak to lightning. So it, it, uh, it doesn't matter really um, what your uh, blood coat is or what your... Um, you know, you've been so used to a certain, um, a certain blood code or something up to this point in time. Ooh. Uh, it's, it's all about the fact of, uh, what's the enemy damage, what's the enemy type, and, uh, how effective are you at matching, um, you know, uh, damage types to different enemies. So that's really where the, uh, where the question comes in, not so much of, you know, what's what's a uh, what's a good blood code or what's a good damage or, you know, what kind of things should you be doing? Oop, monkey. Let's give him a frost wave. So 8400. That's really good for the monkey. It's funny to see this backwards. There were up there were the monkeys that we killed. Um, so then, you know, I mean, this is all light damage, but since uh, we have several different. Um, abilities here. Uh, we have one Ice Crush that's light and it's Cloak of Winter, so you're stuck with this one if you want an Ice Crush as a light mage. Uh, this one, uh, the Barrage Gifts, you have one of each uh, type, uh, elemental type, so that's great. Um, so you can pair that up with like a Flame or a Blood or Lightning uh, to get different damage types. Frost Wave, you have one of this ex exact gift, you don't have four of these. But uh, you do have other Ice Pierce, which is uh, Frost Spike and Frost uh, Ice Barrage. Um, so you can kind of pair that up a little bit with some different light uh, gifting here. So that's, uh, that's kind of how, um, how my thought process goes about um, determining what uh, gifts I need, um, what uh, typing of the enemy I need, and what uh, elements I need versus the enemy. So the same goes for the bosses. Um, I have a spreadsheet that I follow that I've made, um, so every boss that I come up against, I already know what I need to be doing. I have it also written down in my notebook, since I can't switch between two screens, I only have one screen. Um, so that would be ideal to have that up on one screen and look over to it like, oh, I'm here at the Gilded Hunter, I know that I need, uh, oh, it looks like I need Pierce Ice, and then just pick Pierce Ice, and you'll just walk all over him. Uh, so that's the whole point in how to, um, that's the whole point in how to uh, kind of match up uh, different blood codes with different active gifts. You know, don't don't get so stuck 
in code vein uh, to think that well I built I put this build together um, and you know this is all I run the entire game and for some reason I can't kill the Skull King and it's like well he resists every single damage or weapon type and he resists all damage types except crush and no and he has no status effects that uh, you can put on him so you know you have one option crush and that's it so I mean if you do any other weapon damage type or elemental type you will have a very 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 long fight on your hands if at all that you can win um, so you know don't don't uh, don't think that code vein is a once I find the super secret uh, build it's all gonna be over no it's all about in understanding the, the enemy you have that you've come up against understanding the elemental um, resistances and then building appropriately so code vein is all about adapting on the fly and uh, adapting to uh, what area you've gone into and uh, what enemies you're coming up against for example this this same build that we're running here could also uh, with the heavy ice run uh, could do very well in the ashen underground in the ashen cavern uh, so you know if you know that um, then when you come into these areas uh, you know you don't follow my example of the road to 100 where we're just you know putting you know throwing everything against the wall and hoping it'll stick what we're doing in uh, when you're actually trying to gift appropriately uh, you actually go for exactly what the enemy weakness is and you push that button hard so here you know we'll just hit him with a frost wave and he's dead and we're definitely going to switch this uh, to ice pierce so this whole area is ice pierce um, so yeah you do ice pierce you're gonna you're gonna wreck here so we'll run over this guy we'll kill him uh, almost so 10,000 damage is pretty good okay thanks Eva and we'll run over here we'll fight some of these guys and we need some uh, we need some uh, damage and we need some eye core back and you see that since we're doing uh, ice damage versus this guy our uh, ice blood is doing really really great damage and we're getting really good eye core back at the same time so we'll hit him with a frost wave and we'll get a backstab and this should kill and it, sure enough it does okay and remember these guys are weak to blood let's go for a cloak of winter okay and we'll go for that thing over there when we're done with this guy there we go so see we are typed correctly we'll pick up the survivor vestige um, see we're we're typed correctly for these enemies um, so the fact of the matter is, is we can uh, run through them pretty quickly pretty effectively uh, with no real uh, no real issues um, which is really nice because uh, when you come up against these enemies and you're kind of like uh, what do I do how do I do it and remember if we get focused um, we will have 50% uh, more damage on our ice uh, so that's really really good so we'll uh, continue over this way and uh, we'll fight some of these guys what oh wow I've not seen her throw knives in the longest time but we can get a launch which is great and we can get a second good now I took the I core route here instead of uh, the um, damage route so we'll do this and we'll go for a frost wave and that kills him or her whatever because she's a uh, um, she is uh, uh, a gunner, and the gunners are weaker than the sword bearers. See? Okay. Good job, Eva. Now we'll get some high core back from this guy. So we go back. There's our 2.4 uh, back on slash. So there's the invasion, which I don't want to do since this video is getting already a little bit long. But. Uh, yeah, and I think actually that's a great place to stop. So you can kind of see that if you're typed for the enemy correctly with uh, slash, pierce, or crush, um, and then you're typed also correctly for the actual what kind of gift you're going to be running, uh, you can do just crazy bonkers damage. And if you're typed wrong, uh, you will just get wrecked and get smashed every single time, and you'll be really frustrated at Code Vein. So remember, Code Vein is all about the adaptability you have and the mental gymnastics you're willing to go through to figure all this out 
to really, really, really uh, steamroll the game in uh, the, the funnest way possible. So I thank you all for watching. I hope this helped you out. I hope it kind of gave you a guide on how to think about Code Vein rather than, uh, you know, here, pick, uh, pick Orion and all your problems will be solved. You know, that, that doesn't really exist in Code Vein. Um, there's a lot of one-shots. There's a lot of huge damage numbers and everything. But the actual fundamental underlying reason of why you would pick that that's more what I'm interested in, and that's why I'm sharing this with you. And again, remember, this is an entirely opinion-based video. So uh, if you disagree, that's completely fine. Um, you're, you're, you know, we, we live in a fairly free world, so you're still, <laughs> you're still allowed to believe whatever you wish. This is just how I, appro uh, how I approach um, different concepts and different, uh, um, different idiosyncrasies here in the game. So. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope this helped you out and I hope it gave you some pointers, some things to think about, and uh, a path forward for uh, understanding how to gift and how to um, match up enemies correctly.